Hi and welcome to another video. In this video I just wanted to go through the latest update that's just been released uh, the 1st of September uh, 2021 for the uh, GT AX11000 and I believe this firmware also covers uh, other uh, routers that are released by Asus. Um, so this one looks quite important, uh, the update. Uh, looking through the actual change log, so if you go to the Asus website as we can see here, um, and this is particularly for the GTX 11000. Um, you can go under BIOS and firmware, and then you'll be able to see your specific one for your uh, router. Um, so as you can see here, it's the uh, first of the ninth it was released. It's uh, not huge in size, it's only about 66.5 megabytes. Um, but as you can see, there's about 15 plus uh, CVE um, updates that are included in this. I think there's a lot around the uh, WPA um, encryption. Um, so as you can see here, there's a, a lots of those. So the WPA, so we'll go on to the details about all of these later. Um, but basically all these CVEs mean that they're security or vulnerability uh, updates. Um, so as you can see, there is a lot of them here. Um, and some of them actually go back because the way they do the formatting, you can see go, go back to 2016, 2018, and you've got 2019, 20, and there is some newer ones from 2021 as well. As you can see, it covers a lot of different parts of the software that's in within the actual firmware for our Asus um, routers and everything else. So as you can see, you can see there's within that firmware it is rather complex. Um, so it has all these different parts and many, many more in there. So all it takes is one of these parts to actually have a vulnerability and then you'll be able to see. Um, so if we have a look here, so to begin with, uh, we'll start off with uh, going through what the actual, these busy box and then what these actual programs are. I won't go into the great details of the actual uh, vulnerability and you can actually, um, if you wanted to, you can just Google search it and uh, it's like this, it will come up with um, severity of it and then also more details that you can look up about the actual um vulnerability that's been patched and everything else so you can just google that um, and it normally comes up with more information if you're wanting more information on that particular one and everything else so just a quickly basic to go through as you as we know in our dashboard and everything else here you normally have to go to uh, administration and then you go to the firmware upgrade and then you just click on check and then you can see it will start to check for any updates. As you can see, I'm using an AI mesh right now, so it's telling me about both my uh, routers, um, as you can see here. And uh, you can see this one is already on the latest. There's no update, but for the GTX 11,000, we've got that security update, um, and you can see here it's got the latest version. Um, yours, when you do log in, you'll probably get a notification, um, but it's always worth checking at least once a month, as you can see from this one's includes 15 um, security updates so it's always good um, but also if you see a little bell flashing that means that there's a firmware update and as we said you just go to administration firm upgrade and then check and then you can just um, upgrade the firmware um, and then it will do it automatically and restart just remember it will be it'll probably take about five ten minutes for um, everything to restart and update as well so you, you'll lose all your Wi-Fi access so just remember that so if you're working from home like most people are these days um, it will cut off your internet um, for that amount of time so just probably best to do it in the evening or when it's not very busy so as we said here we've got the uh, different updates uh, to go through um, so as we can see here, the first one is a uh, busy box so Busy boxes like I think they describe themselves as a Swiss Army knife um, for the uh, Linux um, operating system. Um, so basically, it has many Unix um, utilities in a small executable file. So it's basically just got lots of utilities inside one um, application. Basically, you can see it as. Um, and the problem with that is that because there's lots and lots inside one. Um, and of course, lots of big companies like this use a lot of open software, um, open source software. Um, 
there's it's more chance of having some uh, finding vulnerabilities, bugs and things like that. But as you can see here, it's fixing uh, three of these right now in BusyBox. Um, so as we said, this one just basically has lots of different um, utilities in it, um, all under just one uh, executable uh, for the Linux kernel and things like that. So next is a CURL. Um, and so what that does is uh, basically it's it's a certificate for certificates. So for your HTTPS, you remember you always see like on your banking and also secure websites, you see the padlock. So what CURL supports is and performs is an SL certificate verification by default. Um, so what happens is it will basically go out and it will obtain a remote server certificate and then check that certificate against a certificate authority um, to make sure it's valid. Um, and then it will make sure. So this is where sometimes you'll get that error where if the certificate is self-signed, um, and it will say that this certificate is not safe or this website is not safe and things like that. And you have to click pass or accept, allow it. Um, so that's what this one actually does for there. Um, so as you can see here, there's about six uh, different um, CVEs for that one. Uh, Light HTTD. Um, so that's like a little server that runs within the firmware. And it's basically um, a very small memory footprint uh, web server. And um, so it performs all the usual things you think for like a web server for presenting the GUI and everything else and all the actions. Um, so again, as we said, it's, you don't realize in the firmware how complicated it is and how many little things it's got running inside it. So this one's basically just a little server and you can see there that it's actually got a one update there for a, a vulnerability. Um, then you have the underlining uh, operating system that goes in the firmware and as you know for Linux so you've got three there so that's the overall like your Windows operating system but this is the uh, operating system for the um, for our Asus uh, routers. Uh, next one is uh, LLDPD um, so this one here um, is a bit more complicated but to simplify it basically allows you to know exactly or allows the router to know exactly on which port um, is a server. So you could think of it as um, it'll basically go out and it'll check. So you know like you've got, um, you type in www.google.com um, and that will either go to HTTP, so that will be port 80. So it automatically go, know what port that is. And also for secure um, connections through HTTPS, it will be 443 port. So basically it's just a, a, a good little utility that actually um, identifies the protocol um, and the link layer. So basically the um, standard that's in there and then it tells you which port is a server and back and forward. So next uh, we'll go on to uh, the Avanchi, um, I think that's how it's said. Um, I'm sure I probably said it wrong. Um, so again, what this does is basically it's a um, it's quite clever. It's like a little system which enables uh, programs to publish and discover services on your no local network. So basically, if there's a program there, or you um, so for example, you plug in um, a computer into your network. Um, what it actually does is um, it automatically advertises the network services running on its machine. So it helps user access to those services. So in this case, it will be something that they will advertise out that the router can actually uh, look at to doing. So can it do, you switch on the FTP access or shared access or anything like that, where you can access the USB drive um, and what other services you've got available on there or advertise out to the network so you don't have to even think about it. This automatically works it out and then basically um, advertises out and then um, to the network what that what your router can actually activate and what the services are doing as well on the network. So it's quite cool. Um, again, for that one, there's a, another uh, vulnerability that's being patched. Uh, so the next one is the host um, APD. Um, so again, this one here is basically, it's a, 
it, it's basically a de space user space demon. So that's what, uh, basically a service that runs in a uh, software service that runs on your network and basically acts as an access point and authentication server as well. Um, so it's around the security and everything else that's part of the host uh, access point service that's within the actual router as well. So it de deals with the security and authentication and things like that. Uh, as next we will come to the uh, up here. Uh, next we'll come to the uh, Open VPN. As we know, Open VPN is just one of the VPNs that are built into there, and there's two vulnerabilities that's been patched. Um, most importantly, as well, there's as you can see, there's huge amount uh, that have been updated here um, for around WPA. So the WPA is around the type of encryption. So we've got WPA. Um, we've got WPA2, WPA3. So these vulnerabilities cover all of those uh, different standards and you've got updates and everything else and uh, patches uh, for all of that wireless encryption technology. So it's good to see they've updated. But as you can see overall, this has been, even though it's um, not a huge update, security-wise it is a huge update because it patches a lot of security holes that via um, your Wi-Fi encryption, the VPN, um, authentication, and then just uh, all the different parts of the um, how you authenticate and access the uh, router as well. So um, it's always good to see they're updating this, um, but then again, it just shows you on how many different part, different software um, that's actually running in the firmware, and then how it opens up due to more complicated, like our GTX 11,000, it's an expensive uh, router um, and so of course we expect it to do lots of different things but within that that of course opens up a lot of bigger footprint for um, potential vulnerabilities but again it's good to see that they're updating um, and everything else so this has just been a quick update to go through the uh, updates that come through and then the, what's being patched so I hope you found this useful. As usual, any uh, questions, just put them in the comments. I'll try and answer them. Thanks very much and have a great day.